What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 most unique ways WWE wrote a wrestler off TV. There are times where a wrestler may be needing to get surgery, or maybe they got to film a movie, or maybe they just need to take some time off. Or in certain situations, say, you know, they need to go into rehab or whatnot. Um, they will write them off TV, you know, in order for that situation to happen or whatnot in a particular few whether it's to you know fix whatever they got going on behind the scenes or whatnot uh the recent one uh, i can think of is matt riddle being sent to the gulags per solo sokoa uh to go into rehab to deal with the drug issues that he's dealing with you know and hopefully he's you know overcoming those uh as we speak so you know it's just that's the way to get people off tv so we're gonna check out some of the creative ways where people were sent to the gulags appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel let's get into this there comes a time when a wwe wrestler may have to be written off of tv this can be for See, several reasons go. but the usual reason relates to an injury occurring to the specific wrestler and the wrestler subsequently needs to be pulled off tv with immediate effect mm -hmm. throughout the decorated history of wwe there have been some downright wild ways the wwe yep, have buried a lot of matches off tv that are both unique and newsworthy so with that being said <laughs> John, let's examine deleted. the 10 <laughs> most unique ways a wwe wrestler was written off tv Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook. Subscribe for to Wrestling Like Me if you haven't already. Number 10, Rey Mysterio, I Removed. Jesus, bro. Oh, the, they, there was a million things they could have did. But making a fake eyeball, that, 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 one of the worst stipulations to a match, the eye for eye match I have ever seen. It was just, oh my God. The global pandemic allowed WWE to experiment with how they present their matches. This resulted in WWE introducing cinematic style matches, and some of them were better than others. Yeah. One of the more infamous things WWE did during this time period was an eye for an eye match at the 2020 <sighs> Extreme Rules event. This was a thing, y'all. The stipulation of the match stated that the winner of the match will be the first person to extract their opponent's eyeball. I don't even have to say anything how stupid that sounds. We're talking about wrestling here. We've seen some dumb stipulations and matches. This? All right. Rollins would end up winning the match by piercing Mysterio's eye on the corner of the ring steps, resulting in Mysterio's eye popping out. This was a rather sinister act and certainly pushed the boundaries of what a PG product could get away with. Nevertheless, the real reason that Mysterio needed to be written off TV for a short period was due to contract issues, but these were eventually resolved, resulting in Mysterio returning back to WWE, albeit with a new mask to represent the missing eye. Even though the, and then they tried to spin it, it, it almost was out, but it was still connected. I, I, I just didn't care. Number 9. Mr. Kennedy, The Act of Impersonation in 2007, WWE had major plans for Mr. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. He was going to be revealed as the illegitimate son of Mr. McMahon, which yeah. would propel him to the main event scene in WWE. The issue was that this storyline had to be altered due to Kennedy failing the wellness policy. WWE addressed Kennedy's absence on TV with a line from McMahon himself. During a promo, McMahon would declare that Kennedy had been suspended for impersonating a McMahon. McMahon was evidently furious that Kennedy's actions had ruined this major storyline, mm -hmm. so McMahon quickly needed a plan B, and this was when the storyline officially went off the rails, as it was revealed that Hornswoggle was McMahon's illegitimate son. Which is, I just was, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just, the thing about wrestling, it's, there's been some, questionable booking and creative decisions that have happened in the past not everything that happened in the attitude and the ruthless aggression era was great i can tell you this now living through it not everything was great <laughs> number eight elias hit and run 
The most infamous hit-and-run segment in WWE took place in 1999 mm -hmm. when Rikishi ran down Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. But WWE have used the criminal act to write off a character more times than fans may think. What? In 2020, Elias needed to be written off TV due to an injury, so WWE booked a segment which would see Elias run down by a vehicle. It was believed to be Jeff Hardy as the one behind the vehicle, and this storyline would develop when Elias eventually returned. But the storyline fell flat as there was a lack of fan interest in a whodunit surrounding the Drifter. Yeah. Although the storyline didn't light the world on fire, it was certainly appreciated that WWE went the extra mile in writing a character off TV. Number 7. <laughs> Eric Bischoff dumped in a car. It was crazy. The car didn't even look damaged or nothing. Garbage truck. Now, I remember this. Eric Bischoff's work as the Raw GM between 2002 and 2005 was acclaimed by fans. Bischoff had a tremendous presence as an on-screen authority figure, and he never took away from any of the major storylines. <laughs> in 2005, it was finally time to write Bischoff off TV in order for him to work on his autobiography. And to do this, WWE would present the trial of Eric Bischoff. Mm -hmm. This was a fun way of bringing three years of Bischoff as GM to a close. To write Bischoff off TV, WWE would have Vince McMahon dump Bischoff into the back of a garbage truck. <laughs> and according to Bischoff, this was initially going to be Cena who placed him in the truck, but Bischoff believed it would make more logical sense for it to be his arch rival in Mr. McMahon. It was a fantastic segment and a compelling way to say farewell <laughs> to a beloved villain. Number 6. The Spirit Squad Boxed Up and Sent Back to OVW Damn. The Spirit Squad were one of the most interesting stages. You know what? I did. I remember they did ship these niggas off. <laughs> they were a group of male cheerleaders who were most commonly known for their 2006 feud against D Generation X. When the time came for the Spirit Squad to be written off TV and sent back to OVW, WWE did the most meta thing possible. Yeah. The X would throw them into a box on Raw, <laughs> I remember which had this. the letters OVW I stamped forgot. on it. This was DX humor at its very best, but some fans were critical of the segment as they believed that WWE were doing a huge disservice to five men who had played the roles relatively well. That's Number funny, bro. I forgot they did ship them off. <laughs> Legit. Five, Hulk Hogan, Mr. America, Real Identity Revealed. Yeah. Following WrestleMania 19, WWE decided to have Hulk Hogan portray the Mr. America character. This was to continue the ongoing feud between Hogan and Mr. McMahon, but the feud had come to its natural conclusion at WrestleMania 19, so there was no real reason it needed to continue. Mm -hmm. The Mr. America persona surfaced after McMahon and Kayfabe ordered Hogan to sit out the rest of his contract. For the next few weeks following the arrival of Mr. America, McMahon tried to uncover the truth of Mr. America's identity. <laughs> As this lackluster storyline was just getting going, Hogan quit WWE due to creative differences, and WWE had to think of a smart way to address Hogan being off TV. McMahon would cut a promo on SmackDown where he showed fans dark match footage of Hogan unmasking. McMahon would then declare that Mr. America was going to join Hogan in the unemployment line, virtually writing off both the Mr. America and the Hulk Hogan characters simultaneously. I mean, that's a good way to write it Number off. four, Paul Bearer being buried alive in concrete. I remember this. I was like, bro, that's real concrete, right? That looks like real con concrete. What? What? How the hell are they doing? Did they really just kill this man? <laughs> the legendary Paul Bearer has been Rest written off WWE TV in some wild ways over the years. In 2004, Bearer had returned to WWE to join forces with The Undertaker once again. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker had reverted to his dead man persona, so it made logical sense that the Bearer and The Undertaker's pairing would reunite. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Bearer was suffering from serious health issues at the time, and this forced Bearer to be written off TV. To do this, WWE would have Bearer buried alive in a concrete crypt at the 2004 Great American Bash event. I remember that. This made little sense as it was actually the dead man himself who was responsible yeah. for burying Bearer in concrete. It was explained in the storyline that Bearer was making The Undertaker weak, which was a poor justification. Yeah, it did make in sense. In 2010, Bearer was in the midst of a storyline alongside Edge and Kane, and this time Bearer was written off TV by being pushed off a ladder onto a concrete floor. <laughs> what? This storyline was much more comedic in nature, and it was great to see Bearer on WWE <laughs> TV again in a substantial what the role. Fuck? <laughs> Number three, The Undertaker discovered in a vegetative state. On the May 28, 2010 edition of SmackDown, The Undertaker defeated Rey Mysterio to qualify for the world title match at the Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view event. 
However, the dead man was seriously injured in the match as he suffered a concussion, a broken orbital bone, and a Whoa, broken nose. This wow. forced the dead man to take extended time away from WWE, Damn. and WWE had to think of a logical way to explain why WWE's top stars suddenly wasn't on TV. WWE could have gone down the route of simply explaining that The Undertaker was injured, but this could have seriously damaged the mystique of the dead man. I get WWE that. WWE decided to have Kane come out on SmackDown and declare that he found his half-brother in a vegetative state, and somebody had attacked the dead man. This storyline would unfold throughout the summer of 2010, and it was eventually revealed that it was Kane himself who had laid out The Undertaker. Kane and The Undertaker <laughs> would then embark in a feud over the world title, culminating in a buried alive match mm -hmm. at the bragging rights pay-per-view number two Vince McMahon <laughs> limo explosion now this one is an infamous one because it's like what you just gonna end the show and blow yourself up Vince <laughs> what the hell Vince McMahon in 2007 decided it was time to say farewell to the villainous Mr. McMahon character mm -hmm. therefore to write the character off TV, McMahon had the idea of seemingly killing the character off. McMahon would get into a limo on the June 11, 2007 Blow edition of Raw, <laughs> and it would burst into flames, putting an official end to the Mr. McMahon character. This angle received major mainstream attention, including from Donald Trump, who had to make a personal call to WWE HQ to ensure that McMahon wasn't legitimately deceased. <laughs> The controversial storyline was eventually scrapped after the real-life death of Chris, Nancy, and Daniel Benoit. Mm -hmm. The planned storyline was going to dominate WWE programming, and there were rumors that it was going to be Linda McMahon as the one behind McMahon's limo exploding. And there were even rumors that the storyline was going to see a brand new McMahon family member introduced onto WWE TV. Due to the Benoit tragedy, yeah. WWE did the right thing in canceling the storyline, and <laughs> WWE would eventually rework the storyline by McMahon explaining that he faked his own death to see what his own family thought of him. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> of course they had to do that shit, because it's like, bro, you blew up fucking last week. Now you over here on the show? What the hell happened? Explain yourself, Vince. <laughs> John Cena stabbed in a nightclub. Now this I don't remember. When John Cena needed a month off to film the first Marine movie in 2004, WWE had to think of a way to take Cena off TV without impacting his popularity. WWE came up with the crazy idea of explaining that Cena had been stabbed in a nightclub by Carlito's bodyguard, Jesus. Oh. This was a unique way to go about taking Cena off TV, and Cena eventually returned to get revenge on Jesus. I remember that. Yo, oh, who remembers the John Cena Carlito feud? I remember. Dang, that slipped my mind, bro. He, they did go with the story. This nigga stabbed him in a nightclub, and he came back for the beats. <laughs> By defeating him in a street fight at the 2004 Armageddon pay-per-view event. There have been some downright insane ways WWE have taken a talent off TV, <laughs> but it's stabbing in a nightclub is, without question, one of the most drastic. Oh, man, I remember that one. That uh, that actually worked. It, it, it worked. You know what I'm saying? It, it enhanced the feud. John Cena was able to come back and get his, his revenge. I, I'm all for that, man. Comment down below. Let me know what are some of the craziest ways you've seen a wrestler get written off a of TV if it wasn't already on this list. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K, and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.